Hello Sparky, how's it going my old pal? Ooh, Sparky says he's really tired. Why is that Sparky? You've been staying up all night watching like Paw Patrol or Pup films. Okay, what is it? <gasps> Sparky said he climbed to the top of a really tall hill yesterday. Oh goodness me, you must be tired. Was it fun at least? What did you like about the hill? You chased Horatio, yeah, that sounds fun. What else? You could see everything from the top. Uh, anything else? It was fun rolling down. Rolling down? That sounds a bit dangerous, Sparky. Did you get hurt? Of course not. Okay, sorry, sorry. That was a bit boring and grown up of me, wasn't it? Anyway, I think we're actually gonna look at a time when Jesus was on a hill or a mountain today. I wonder what he got up to. Should we have a look? Okay, let's go. Jesus said when he was doing his sermon on the mountain, that you should always do for others what you would hope that they would do for you. He said that the way to destruction has a wide gate and an easy path, but the way to life is through a narrow gate and along a difficult path. Then Jesus spoke about God, how God looks after us. He said, do not be anxious or worried about your life, like what you will eat or drink or wear. Look at the birds and the flowers. God gives them everything they need and he will give you everything that you need too. You can't make anything better by worrying. And there's no point in worrying about tomorrow. Just focus on today. Just ask God and he will give it to you. Look for something and you will find it. Knock on the door and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who looks for something finds it, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. If your child asked you for bread, would you give him a stone? Or if he asked for fish fingers, would you give him a snake? Of course not! So if even you know how to give good gifts, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts for those who ask for them? He told the people to beware people who came and pretended to be good like a meek sheep but were actually ravenous wolves. He said that the way to tell them apart was like how you look at a tree. If the fruit is good, the tree is good. And so, if a per what a person produces is good, they are good too. But if it is bad, so are they. He said that there would be people who would pretend to do things in his name who didn't actually know him at all and wouldn't be part of his kingdom. Jesus said that the people who heard his words and put them into action were like people who built their house on a solid rock which can last through the storms. But the people who didn't do them were like someone who builds their house on the sand which falls down in a storm. One day, as Jesus and the disciples were traveling, they came to a town called Bethany, where a woman called Martha invited them into her house. She had a sister called Mary, who sat down at Jesus' feet and listened to everything that he said with full attention. But Martha was distracted by all the things she'd got to do in the house and was busy cooking and cleaning and working really hard to look after Jesus and their guests. Eventually, she got very annoyed at doing all the work by herself and went to speak to Jesus. She said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Won't you tell her to help me? Martha, Martha, Jesus answered kindly. You're upset and worried about lots of things, but you really don't need to be. Really, there is only one thing that is important. Mary has chosen what is better and it won't be taken away from her. Okay, Spark Kids, here we go into this story with lots of kind of little bits all put together. Jesus was saying so many important things in this sermon on the man. But I found a couple 
both of these things seemed almost to like go against each other. Because on one hand, we've got all this stuff about Jesus saying, be the salt, be the light of the world, shine your goodness before others. And then saying, when you give money, don't show everyone what you're doing, do it secretly so no one can see. If you're fasting, don't show everyone by doing sad faces, do it secretly so no one can see. What? Those two things seem completely different to me. So let's try and work it out. I've got some props to help. I've got some crisps. Now, if we look at these crisps, can you tell me which one of these is salty? There you go. Can you tell me? I can't tell by looking at them which of these crisps is salty, but mm, mm, mm. no, that one's not salty. Let's try this. It's salty. When you taste it, you know if it's salty or not. So how does this help us understand? So the salty crisp doesn't look salty, but when you taste it, you know that it is. So I think this means that but to be salt and light doesn't mean that we're showing off about what we, who we are and what we're doing. It means we're not saying, I'm a Christian, na, 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 na. I'm better than you and you and you and you and you. Because often we're not that much better anyway. But we're also not hiding the amazing things that God is doing in us. We're not hiding that as we let God's love flow into our lives, that that means that we have so much love to give to other people because it's coming in. We're not hiding that actually as Christians, we're happy to put other people first because we know that we are so important to God that we don't need to worry about how important we are. We're not hiding that we love being generous and giving things and being looking after people because we know that God will always look after us so we don't need to worry about not having enough. And we're not worried about all the things we need because we're more focused on doing good and building the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is trying in these messages to change the focus from trying to look good and important and like you have everything together <laughs> to actually doing the things that God wants you to do and actually becoming who he wants you to become. And all these things come round and then they lead us into the Lord's Prayer. See, Jesus is, you know, Jesus. He's like the son of God. He's like, should be the best prayer ever, ever, ever. But then the prayer that he teaches us isn't like that fancy or complicated at all. It's not like a really long theology essay with lots of long and complicated words. He prays simply and quite quickly too. He makes God the main character of the prayer. He's not kind of talking about himself so much. He's talking about God most of the time. He calls him father and he calls him king. He prays for God's will to be done rather than praying all about his stuff all the time. He asks forgiveness and provision. Spark kids. To be a good Christian, to be salt and light in this world, we don't have to pray really fancy prayers or tell everyone how awesome we are or kind of show off about it at all. We need to let God be the one who shines through. Let God's love shine through us. We need to make him the main thing instead of us at all. And then when people see us and spend time with us, they will know him as well through us. They'll taste that salt, they'll see that light as they spend time with us. Why don't we finish off by praying the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. See you next week, Spark Kids. Oh my goodness, Sparky, Jesus was up a mountain and instead of playing like you, he prayed a really important prayer, didn't he? Do you know the Lord's Prayer, Sparky? Oh dear, maybe you better learn it like the Spark Kids are going to learn it. Yeah, okay. Actually, you could use the craft to help you, couldn't you? Because we're going to be making these awesome pra Lord's Prayer, what do you call them? Like. I don't know, but they're cool. You can turn it around and have a look at the different sections and you're actually gonna color yours in, unlike Sparky, who is too lazy. Um, this is his craft and he hasn't bothered. Um, but they will be awesome helping you to learn the Lord's Prayer and to pray it too. Um, so Sparky, what are you gonna do this week? Sparky's gonna go up some more hills and when you're there, will you pray or will you play? Both. Now that is a good idea. All right, Spark Kids, we'll see you next week. Bye.